Good morning. Welcome to lesson two, video 11. So here's the deal. The, this series of uh, 50 lessons and many, many videos are commentaries on the, uh, on the lesson texts. So it goes, it should go without saying that today's lesson is not going to make any sense unless you are staring at the latest version of the PDF entitled First Set of Lesson Text. Download the latest version for free right now. Find the second link below this video. Follow that link to the uh, class materials page. And there'll be a bunch of free things on that page. Find the link for the first set of lesson texts and download it. If you don't see a bunch of links below this video, then get to the YouTube to YouTube's dedicated page for this video. Find the um, the YouTube logo right around here. Give it a click or two; it'll take you there. If you don't see the link you're looking for below this video, find the Show More button, and it'll reveal a whole bunch of links. All right, so this is le this is the eleventh video of the second lesson. If you haven't watched all the videos of lesson one and two, then set yourself up for success. Go find lesson one, part one, and start there. All right, let's dig in. We are on uh, page 15 of the first set of lesson texts. You know it's page 15 because the first line reads, he is brilliant. Light radiates the six lights of... And that's all you get. That's the first line. If that's the page you're on, great. Jump down to the second quatrain, the quatrain being a, a set of four lines. And let's review. He has four hands. The inner two are joined in Anjali. The outer two hold a crystal mala, and a white lotus flower. Today we're going to explore the crystal mala. So the gesture used in the line drawing is um, Chin Rizig taking his uh, right ring finger and touching it to his palm holding the mala, which is Buddha, which is Sanskrit for rosary, with um, his middle finger and his thumb. Why this gesture? It's an adaptation of this gesture, known as the warding off gesture or the protecting gesture. Which is very cool. One of the nicknames of Avalokiteshvara, the Buddha of Compassion, is the protector of the three worlds. So, in the in Buddhist cosmology, we do not look at the Buddha of compassion as some milk toast wimp who might toss us a couple of prayers, but someone who will actively help us to meet our needs and pick up the slack where where we need it. We explore this not so that we can become superstitious and believe in something that may or may not be there. We explore this because it inspires us to be active in our compassion and to be active in our love. Not just to toss someone prayers and want to wash our hands, but to roll our sleeves up, if we have sleeves, roll our sleeves up and help people out however we can Ever they need it. That's huge. Um, so this is the protecting gesture, also known as um, the warding off gesture. 
you'll see many images of Padmasambhava making this gesture or perhaps making this gesture while holding a Vajra. The significance of the Vajra we'll explore in a future lesson. So we're just adapting this to that which will allow you to count the mala. Keeping the ring finger on the palm helps to coalesce the energies in the lower abdomen, which helps with concentration. Counting the mala with the um, middle finger helps bring energy to the heart and helps to awaken compassion and love. It's not the key, but it helps. The key to awakening compassion will explore in lesson three. So, this is the gesture for holding the mala. And why is it a crystal mala? Because, quite simply, the crystal represents um, two things. Number one, it represents uh, it's in harmony with the color scheme of Chen Rizig, which is white, and unless he's in this wrathful aspect, then he's black. And, um, it also reminds us of the mind. If you lay a crystal mala on a piece of red fabric, fabric, it looks red. If you lay a crystal mala on a piece of uh, saffron colored fabric, it looks saffron. Likewise, our minds are not independent. Our minds, our emotions, our bodies, our circumstances are dependent on everything else. They're affected by everything else. If not directly, then indirectly. If not actually, then at least potentially. Everything affects everything. So when we experience a painful emotion to explore its its nature, which is dependent on many other things, helps us to explore its, its impermanent nature and consequently let go of it. When we feel a pleasant emotion, such as joy or love or gratitude, rather than becoming very prideful of ourselves and indulging in self-infatuation, we can explore that those positive, constructive emotions are also dependent upon many factors and consequently worthy of letting go. Fun thing to consider. Another neat thing about the mala or the rosary is that you'll see that it's comprised of beads that have been drilled or and are now pierced with a strong thread or string. And likewise, the image of Chandrasekhar counting his mala reminds us that that conventionally, just as Chandrasekhar's love pervades each of us, we are called to do the same and to be loving and to allow our love to pervade everyone, friends, strangers, enemies. Everyone. So what if they hate your guts? Love them anyway. So what if they want you dead? Love them anyway. Remember, love, we're talking about, and, and this is a, a preview of the third lesson. In the Buddhist context, love does not necessarily refer to an emotion, but the intention, the will to take away other people's sufferings and their causes of those sufferings, and the will to lavish them with blessings and the causes of blessings. So, will, uh, volition is different from emotion. What you intend is different than what you feel. We have control over what we intend. What we feel is pretty much a spontaneous grab bag. So, we've talked about uh, Chen Rizig holding the mala. That essentially reminds us of love. And he does it with his right hand, which is in, in harmony with the Mahayana view of iconography, where the right represents compassion and love and in, ta in, in, in sutra. In tantra, the left represents uh, wisdom. Okay, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. In sutra, the left represents wisdom. 
and we see him holding the wood the in, in his left hand a lotus flower a blooming lotus flower that reminds us and we've already discussed the growth process the growth cycle of a lotus it begins in the mud it journeys through murky water it pierces the water and then it blooms that reminds us of the journey um, from being completely um, from being a complete boob, a complete slave to our impulses, to rebelling against our impulses by using Buddha's spiritual uh, techniques, and then finally mastering Buddha's spiritual techniques until we get to the point where we're able to practice gratitude, awareness, love, and letting go. With such mastery that we're able to do so spontaneously, habitually, easily, Effectively. Specifically, we've already discussed, the lotus reminds us of the wisdom of letting go, the wisdom that transcends. So you put it together and you get the mala represent, representing love, the lotus representing letting go. That's really cool. Now, on a deeper level, I'm going to share something that Dilgo Kensei shared. He was one of the late teachers of the present Dalai Lama. He shared that the two puckered palms of the heart can represent wisdom bliss. And the left, lotus in the left hand, off to the side, represents wisdom openness. And so, for instance, those two correlate because in Buddhism, well, you often hear me talk about how in Buddha, Tantric Buddhism we get to indulge our inner Caligula, our inner naughty Roman emperor, if you wish, or if you please. Um, we do that because pleasure is the easiest thing to notice. So why do we meditate on wisdom bliss? Because it captivates our attention. And on the out-breath, we explore the non-graspability of that bliss, and that's wisdom openness. Don't worry, we'll go through that in greater detail in future lessons. Specifically, um, we'll start going through that um, a little bit in the second lesson, this lesson, well, this set of videos, the second set of videos, but more profoundly in the third fourth, fifth, and sixth lessons. But let's stay in the present moment. We're in the second lesson, the eleventh video. Stay with me. Let me check my notes real quick, see if I covered everything. Okay, so you've heard me mention the four Buddha's four mental yogas of devotion, awareness, love, and letting go, which, which is the same as Gratitude, awareness, love, and letting go. There's another way of organizing Buddhist teachings instead of three. And that would be the union of love and letting go, the union of bliss and letting go, and the union of awareness and letting go. That can be symbolized by the three mudras we see. The hands of the heart can represent bliss and letting go. The right hand the right hand counting the mala can represent love and letting go. And the left hand holding the lotus can represent awareness and letting go. In Mahayana Buddhism we talk about the three bodies of a Buddha. We talk about the Nirmanakaya, the Sumbhogakaya, and the Dharmakaya. And there's all kinds of highfalutin explanations of the emanation body, the bliss body, and the wisdom body. But pragmatically, that's just a fancy way of saying that Buddha's mastered love and letting go, bliss and letting go, and awareness and letting go. And so the very the three gestures we see displayed by four-armed Shenrei Zig in the artwork can remind us of that, which is awfully cool. Well, 
that's all we get for today. I thank you for your time and your kind attention. Thank you for watching my videos, doing your homework twice a day, every day, the homework that you received from your last lesson. I thank you for um, registering for the next set of weekly webinars. I thank you for the, the donations you make. They help keep me fed. Before I, oh, so let me give you a quick benediction. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Oh, money upon me whom? Before you go, allow me to remind you to click, whoopsie, to click the like button over here. That's the thumbs up icon. You can't miss it. That will reveal three social networking buttons. Uh, one for Facebook, one for Twitter, and one for Google+. Give them each a click. Share this on the Internet. Expand your circle of influence. You might not be a fully enlightened Buddha just yet. But you can help benefit people spiritually simply by sharing my lessons. Quick reminder, I told you about the two links below the video. The first one will take you to the registration page so you can reserve your spot at the next series of weekly webinars. When do they begin? Friday, this Friday, the 2nd of November. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.